The James Webb Space Telescope is already changing the way we think about the world far away in space. There are a lot of amazing pictures that James Webb keeps getting from planets in our own solar system to pictures from very far away in the universe. We saw the first pictures a year ago, and they were great, the Kina Nebula, Stefan Quintet, and most impressively, this deep field picture that shows thousands of galaxies stretched out into the farthest reaches of the universe. But James Webb may have found the most amazing thing, galaxies, that shouldn't exist, already existed, very far back in time. These things are known as universe breakers, by experts. Some of them may be older than the universe itself. They were not meant to be there, no one saw them coming. Now, no one can say how they came to be. So what's wrong with the Big Bang and current cosmology, in general? Come with us as we look into how the shocking discoveries made by James Webb could change the way we think the universe started. Originally, the Big Bang was a simple idea that grew out of three facts put together in Einstein's general theory of relativity. If matter and or energy are spread out evenly in the universe, it can't stay in one place. The fabric of space in the universe has to either get smaller or bigger. Observationally, there are spirals and ellipticals in the sky lying well beyond the Milky Way, and their distances can be calculated. Also, observationally, the light from these spirals and ellipticals appears to be shifted, with more distant objects showing a greater red shift consistent with an expanding universe. By combining these three facts, we'd assume that the universe, if it's expanding and becoming less dense today, must have been smaller and denser in the past. Over time, we were able to draw many more consequences from the Big Bang, including that the early state must have been hotter as well as denser, and that as the universe expands, it also cools. This allowed us to expect a leftover bath of low-energy radiation with a black body spectrum in all directions arising from when the universe cooled through the threshold that enabled it to form neutral atoms. The James Webb Space Telescope, added to the arsenal of tools astronomers have, continues to fuel doubts about the Big Bang Theory. As its early universe observations cannot be explained by current cosmological models, it challenges the widely held belief in the Big Bang beginning of the universe. Big Bang scientists think that the expansion of galaxies in the universe came from a singularity that exploded billions of years ago. However, the James Webb Space Telescope has given humanity its first high-definition view of the infrared universe. Thanks to Webb's unprecedented capabilities, we're starting to discover and characterize galaxies found in these very early stages of our cosmic history. Prior to James Webb, we had one proven galaxy, GNZ 11, at an age of about 400 million years after the Big Bang and only one other galaxy candidate, possibly at an age of around 330 million years after the Big Bang. Fast forward to the present day, more than one year after James Webb began science activities, and the story has changed dramatically. We now have over 100 galaxy candidates from James Webb that take us back to the first 400 million years of the universe. Several of them have already been proven to indeed be ultra-early and distant. GNZ 11 already is now only the fifth most distant galaxy known, and it's fully expected that over the next months, not only will the current cosmic record for distance be broken, but that at least dozens of new ultra-early, ultra-distant galaxies will soon be confirmed. Many of these early galaxies that James Webb is finding have peculiar, puzzling properties about them that look difficult to reconcile with the theoretical picture that the universe has painted for us. For example, they look to be very massive, very bright, very rich in heavy elements, very actively forming new stars, and very rich in gas. The fact that we see so many galaxies with these properties so early on is puzzling because we believe we understand how gas infalls onto these early galaxies and how star formation feeds back and stops future gas from falling in. There's a limit for how fast material can accrete onto these objects, and although certain physical conditions can lead to an object briefly overcoming that limit, it shouldn't be sustainable over such long timescales. Therefore, when we look at these very early galaxies, we get the sense that something is amiss. It is clear that galaxies recorded by James Webb are so massive that they should not be possible under current cosmological theory. Thus, Big Bang astronomers are now shocked and surprised because, according to the Big Bang theory, those galaxies shouldn't be there. 
There should have been only primordial dust from which they believed that stars and galaxies originated after a primal explosion. The James Webb Telescope is challenging the Big Bang theory held by most scientists, causing consternation in the scientific community, at least among those scientists who believe in the Big Bang beginning of the universe. Big Bang scientists think that dark matter can be the only gravitational explanation for how galaxies behave. However, other scientists have successfully shown an alternative answer to dark matter known as modified Newtonian dynamics. In other words, it is not necessary to think that 80% of the universe must be made up of dark matter to explain certain behavior and movement of galaxies. The late creationist and scientist Dr. Dwayne T. Gish said that the galactic structures found during the past few years are so massive that even if cold dark matter did exist, it could not account for their formation. Furthermore, an explosion cannot explain the exact and orderly orbits and courses of thousands of billions of stars in thousands of billions of galaxies. Gravity may explain how that order is kept, but mere gravity cannot explain the origin of that order. The disorder in the world can be explained because of chance and random processes, but the order can only be rationally explained because of an intelligent power. Some evolutionary astronomers think that trillions of stars crashed into each other, leaving surviving stars to find precise, orderly orbits in space. Not only is this irrational, but if there was such a mass collision of stars, then there would be a supermass residue of gas clouds in space to support this hypothesis. The present level of residue of gas clouds and dust in space doesn't support the magnitude of star deaths needed for such a theory. It's more rational to believe that stars die and decay into gas clouds and dust instead of thinking that gas clouds and dust evolve into stars, as evolutionary astronomers teach. Evolutionary astronomers only believe that gas clouds and dust in the so-called pillars of creation are birthplaces for stars. This assumption is easily passed on as fact in textbooks and media. In another remarkable effort to explain web data, scientists suggested a hybrid model that combines elements of the tired light model and a cosmological model based on evolving coupling constants. This new model suggests a longer galaxy formation time, allowing for the formation of well-evolved early galaxies. However, further study and scrutiny are needed to determine if this model can provide a satisfactory explanation for all the observations in cosmology. On the other hand, the need for a new cosmology is not unprecedented in the scientific world. Mixing models to describe new observations has been done in the past, such as Albert Einstein's explanation of the particle-like and wave-like nature of light. Similarly, estimating the age of the universe based on the age of stars and globular clusters has also been used as an alternative way. In conclusion, the discrepancies between observations and the standard model of cosmology have prompted the suggestion of a new model that suggests a longer age for the universe. While this new model shows promise, further study is needed to determine its validity and if it can provide a complete explanation for all cosmological observations. As a worth note, the eagle eye of James Webb has just found two of the most distant galaxies ever seen supporting the basic picture of galaxy formation as described by the Big Bang Theory. The finding was made possible thanks to a massive gravitational lens in the form of the galaxy cluster known as Abel 2744, nicknamed Pandora's Cluster, located about 3.5 billion light-years away from us. The immense gravity of the cluster warps the very fabric of spacetime sufficiently to increase the light of more faraway galaxies. Using the James Webb Space Telescope to look for early galaxies magnified by this cosmic lens, Binji Wang of the Penn State Eberly College of Science and a member of the James Webb Space Telescope Ultra Deep Near Infrared Spectrometer and Near Infrared Camera Observatory found two of the highest redshift galaxies ever seen. Cosmological redshift, as told, is the stretching of light wavelengths provoked by the constant expansion of the universe. The more distant a galaxy is, the more the universe had grown while that galaxy's light traveled across space to reach us. Therefore, the more the bands of that light are stretched. In this way, they go from tighter bluish ones to redder ones, finally falling into the invisible infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. 
Galaxies that existed just between 300 and 400 million years after the Big Bang have had their lights stretched into those infrared wavelengths that can't be seen by humans, but can indeed be spotted by the Webb's near-infrared camera and near-infrared spectrometer instruments. Wang and her team were able to spot the lensed images of two high-redshift galaxies, one designated Uncover Z13. Z is shorthand for redshift, and it has a redshift of 13.79%, placing it on the all-time list of most distant galaxies. We see this realm as it was just 350 million years after the Big Bang. What sets the two uncovered galaxies out as different is their appearance. Other galaxies seen at similarly high redshifts seem to be point-like, meaning they are very small, just a few hundred light-years across. The uncovered galaxies, on the other hand, have a different appearance. Previously discovered galaxies at these distances show as a dot in our images, but one of ours appears extended, almost like a peanut, and the other looks like a fluffy ball. These galaxies are also bigger, with Uncover Z2 having an edge on disk about 2,000 light years across, which is six times larger than other galaxies seen in this era. It is unknown if the difference in size is due to how the stars formed or what happened to them after they formed but the diversity in the galaxy properties is really interesting, said Wang. These early galaxies are supposed to have formed out of similar materials, but already they are showing signs of being very different than one another. Although the dichotomy in galaxy properties, even at this early stage in the universe, is eye-opening, both of the newfound realms have general characteristics that are highly supportive of the Big Bang model. This model describes how, in the aftermath of our universe's creation, Galaxies began life small, before growing quickly through mergers with other galaxies and gas clouds. This growth, in turn, spurred more star formation, which eventually increased the abundance and variety of elements contained within the young galaxies, introducing substances to them that are heavier than hydrogen and helium. The galaxies uncovered by uncover, if you'll excuse the pun, are young, small, have a low abundance of heavy elements and are actively forming stars all of which supports the whole paradigm of the Big Bang Theory. Joe A.R.A., who is an assistant professor of astronomy and astrophysics at Penn State University and a co-researcher on Wang's team, said in the release, Interestingly, the Webb telescope has the power to see even higher redshift galaxies than uncover Z13 and S12, meaning they'd be even younger. But it didn't identify any being lensed by the Pandora cluster. As Leia said, that could mean that galaxies just didn't form before that time and that we're not going to find anything farther away, or it could mean we didn't get lucky enough with our small window. Astronomers will keep looking using a variety of lensing clusters to open up new windows into the deep universe in search of some of the first galaxies. That's all the information that we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you liked today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. Be sure to also tell us what you think about today's material. Everyone's support motivates us to continue providing quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.